सर गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम प्रिंसिपल उदय सिंह राजपूत Oh, good morning, sir. Nice to see you. <laughs> In so fact, we were not Darwad? able to speak. <laughs> Darwad, it is becoming very critical, sir. Uh, <laughs> rather, yeah. uh, strict measures are in force now. Yes, yes, yes. So <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> we don't know how we are going to face yeah. this. See, sir. Actually, still it takes another two to three months. Yeah, there is a possibility uh, of such a long uh, struggle with this COVID nineteen. <laughs> exactly in the month of uh, June, I had told India will cross eight lakhs. Somebody laughed at me. Oh, oh now, oh, oh. now it has already crossed eight lakhs. Ten lakhs, sir. Today's figure is ten lakhs. Yeah, yeah. I June only I predicted, sir. By July, oh, yeah. it will uh, reach eight lakhs. And now, now I think it is around thirty-five lakhs. Oh, 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 oh! Now the rising curve started. Probably rising we have hope... second wave, third wave. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, people are not, uh, you know, wearing the mask, social distance. They are not maintaining. True, true, true. Actually, so many. Sir, things. hello, yes. sir. Yes, madam. Madam. Sir, it's eleven twenty-eight or something. Shall we start, sir? Yeah, no problem, madam. No problem. Okay, okay, sir. विद्वान सर्वत्र पूजते महात्मा गांधी वन सर लीव एज इफ यू वेर टू डाई टुमोरो learn as if you were to live forever good morning everyone i am sujatha kadapurai and hearty welcome to this one day national level webinar on role of language and literature in pandemic situation organized by department of english kelly societies basav prabhu kore arts science and commerce college chikodi karnataka i request our dynamic principal professor u r rajput to welcome the gathering please sir thank you Hello everyone. Good morning, everybody. I feel honored and privileged to welcome to our prestigious Kelly Societies, PK College, Chikori. The Department of English of our college has organized a national level webinar on role of language and literature in pandemic situation. For this, I welcome the today's resource person, Dr. Gurnath Badgeer, Associate Professor, HOD of English. PG coordinator government first aid college dharwad i welcome you sir i also welcome all registered delegates for this webinar number series l1 from our college thank you very much Thank you, sir. I appeal Dr. Geeta Anjali Dadmani, HOD of English, and the convener to introduce our day's chief guest. Please, ma'am. Good morning to everyone. I am Dr. Geeta Anjali Dadmani, head Department of English, KLS BK College, Chikodi. 
take this opportunity and feel honored and privileged to introduce our day's well-known resource person, Dr. Gurunath K. Badger, Associate Professor and Head, Department of English, and PG Coordinator, GFGC, and PG Center, Kumareshwar Nagar, Dharbad. Sir was born in 1972 in Badami Taluk, completed his graduation from Basaveshwar Arts College, Bagalkot, and MA from Karnataka University, Dharbad. He was awarded MPhil and PhD from Gulbarga University in 1998 and 2008, respectively. He has two books to his credit, a short history of English literature and an introduction to English phonetics with DVD. Sir is also having the membership for the following. Dr. Gurunath Badger is member of All India English Teachers Association, New Delhi. Member of Wells, LCI, Secretary, Karnataka University Academic Forum for English Teachers, Dharwad. Vice President, KRMSS, ABRSM, Karnataka Adhyapak Parishad, Bengaluru. Sir is also BOS member of Karnataka University, Dharwad, Lingraj College, Belagavi, PC Jobin College, Hubali. Sir is also having 12 radio talks to his credit. Dr. G. K. Badiger is also a PhD guide at Kannada Vishwavidyalaya Hampi and PhD external referee at Shivaji University, Kolhapur, Maharashtra. Sir has 24 years of teaching experience and is awarded associateship from IIAS Shimla and presented a project paper in the first spell of the associateship in 2013. I proudly say that even I have attended few of the classes of G.K. Badiger sir at Gulbarga University when I was a PG student there. Sir has also attended 42 national, 14 international seminars and has presented 42 papers and also has been a keynote resource person for eight national and six state level seminars. With this brief introduction of Dr. G.K. Badiger sir, once again, I welcome to you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Over to you, Sujata. Thank you, ma'am. Before going to start with the session, I request all the participants to turn off your audios and videos, please. And if you feel any doubts or the queries, please post them into chat box. Please do not disturb in between. I request Dr. G.K. Badgay, sir, to please continue the session. A very good morning to all of you, respected principal of uh, KLE Societies, Baswa Prabhu Kore Arts, Science and Commerce College, Chikodi, Dr. Uday Singh Rajput, sir, the Honorable IQAC Coordinator, Dr. B. Z. Kulkarni, and HOD of this Department of English and convener of the seminar, Dr. Srimati Gitanjali Durmani, the organizing secretaries, Ms. Sujata, Mr. Ajit, and all the honorable delegates online. Many of are my senior friends, and one of them is my guru, Dr. Viresh Badige, and all my best friends from Karnataka and Maharashtra and all over the country are here. And uh, I congratulate the BK College Chikodi for having organized a series of such lectures. And today we are very happy to be the part of this particular webinar on the topic, the role of language and literature in the pandemic situation. So uh, the topic itself uh, gives you a very different kind of uh, perspective towards understanding of life through language and literature. 
when we had a talk with the coordinators we were just talking what we should discuss so, uh, when it comes to hello are you getting me hello i think uh, others can mute themselves okay um the 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 very topic suggests that what is the role of language and literature what literature offers you in such a situation we are all in a kind of a situation that we are totally covered by different kind of language now the language whether you are a social science teacher or a teacher of languages or a teacher of any subject we have almost forgotten our own subjects and we begin to speak the language of covid-19 we begin to speak about the positive cases we begin to speak about deaths around us we begin to speak about seal downs lockdowns you know we begin to speak about unlock g point 0.1 0.2 lockdown 1 2 3 so this has become the order of the day all over the world probably you know that this is probably we are all we all belong to a generation we have not seen such a situation in our lifetime there may be seniors more than 60 65 years or there may be juniors here we never come across this kind of a situation in our lives for the first time we begin to you know witness a kind of a situation around us a kind of a, a an atmosphere uh you know where life life is growing to be rather very very serious and we think that you know hope is rather a far flung thing so on this occasion i i want to uh, in fact uh, share some of my thoughts views and let us uh, i am going to share my screen now uh, hope we will be discussing in another uh, 40 or 45 minutes uh, so that there will be questions and answers later uh, so let us just uh, discuss what is pandemic what is language what is the solution uh, i know th th these are the things we can just discuss for a uh, few minutes here uh, i am going to share my screen now um, yes can you see the screen yes sir yes sir yes sir yes, yes, yes. see uh difference um we need to understand these terms first because let's discuss in simple the language literature and pandemic the three terms used in this particular uh, topic the role of language and literature in pandemic situation so what is a language then uh you know when it comes to language we all know that language and literature play a major role in human life uh you know um, language by language we are all identified through this particular special quality man is known man is known as an intelligent animal social animal the most two living animal and the intellectual animal and at the same time of course george orwell made a very famous statement man is only the animal that consumes without producing in his famous uh, novel uh, animal form uh, so language is uh, in fact uh, playing a very very important role in our everyday life Uh, you know your language uh, mm, suggests your personality language is suggestive language is communicative language is social you know uh, we all know i uh, uh, know uh, many linguistic terms related to language man is not only a social animal but also known for intellectual capacity when it comes to the 
the very very uh, complexity of human language complexity of human thinking you know man thinks most uh, that's why language is the most sophisticated tool man uses for expressing his or her feelings emotions and thoughts language is the expression of ideas by means of speech sounds combined into words and you also know that language is dynamic language is changing from time to time as i i told you that language provides you such uh, you know uh, you know ever changing opportunity so uh, how a language affects us let's see in some of our uh, slides here the second term is what is literature uh, uh, just in simple terms you know literature is all that is written uh, can be called literature at the same time when we go deeper into the meaning uh, we used to say that the best that is written the best that is thought you know uh, all uh, the literature provides you literature is an expression of life through the medium of language uh, uh, we we must understand here the role of language and and literature is the byproduct of language you know language has given expression to variety of things both verbal non verbal literary expressions whatever see uh, literature Uh, consists of great books of human interest um, why literature is important for us you all know that literature provides you fund of knowledge literature takes you to knowledge of the past and present even i you know we visit the streets of babylon we visit in the in the greek uh you know uh, greek roman empire the past we come across a variety of dialogues discussions that happened between the intellectuals of the past so literature takes us to the experiences of the best and uh, we cultivate special interest uh, for nature and its beautiful aspects literature introduces us to the best experiences normally when it comes to literature you know it, it 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 either it is speaking about man and his nature and and between these two things everything in fact uh, uh, happens the interesting factors of literature are thought feeling imagination beauty style and form this 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 is the speciality of uh, literature the person who is uh, uh, you know known for uh, great reading you know we remember uh, francis bacon saying that reading maketh the full man writing an exact man and conference a ready man when he said like that reading makes man full it means uh, the person who studies literature the person who reads good books you know uh, you are like a, a pot with the full water it means that you are a filled person uh, i mean to say that literature makes you full there is a sense of completeness there is a sense of beauty in you there is a sense of calmness there is a sense of understanding there is a sense of satisfaction there is a sense of some kind of serenity because reading good books provides you varied experiences uh, i remember uh, the words of uh, uh, wb eights he speaks about spiritus mundi in his famous poem the second coming spiritus mundi he by saying spiritus mundi 
W.B. Eats is speaking about the knowledge cluster, the cluster of brains, the cluster of millions of minds which come together. And that's what literature is the product of the sum total of thinking. You know, whatever I am today may be shaped by number of thoughts already thought by my ancestors, my gurus, my students. So this is what uh, even T.S. Eliot endorses in his famous essay, What is Classic? I mean to say what we are speaking today is the continuity of the past. What we are, you know, so in that way, literature provides you um, bundle of experiences, provides you a number of feelings and the beauty of expressions and wonderful world of imagination. I know literature also provides you the wonderful world of imagination. I come to that point later and how imagination, beauty, style and form, the loss of imagination, the loss of feeling, the loss of beauty, the loss of style, how these things actually make man miserable. This is already mourned by uh, T.S. Eliot in his famous poem, The Wasteland, you know, and even Matthew Arnold was also speaking about our divided aims and palsied hearts, you know, um, we are on a darkling plain, like two ignorant armies fighting by the night, uh, how ignorance also leads to some kind of struggle, how we are moving towards a kind of a wasteland, these are the things that you read in wonderful literature. I mean to say that uh, when, when we go through this kind of things, whether you go back to um, William Wordsworth, when he said, the world is too much with us of late, we lay waste our time and energy, we lay waste our powers in getting and spending. When, when when Wordsworth spoke these words in 19th century, probably he is like a rishi and speaking out the impending dangers humanity is going to face. And, and, and let's move on, uh, you know, feeling, imagination, beauty, style and form, how these things help us overcome uh, the present situation and how these things really make us feel uh, better than um, before. And, and, and to continue with uh, our discussion on literature, I uh, have some more points here to share with you. Literature is a criticism of life. Um, this is what Matthew Arnold, the famous critic and poet uh, of 19th century uh, writes. Literature is criticism of life. It's, it's, it's in fact, it's an expression of life. It's, it, it in fact, uh, you know, a big focus is life here. Life is the raw material of literature, all about our joys, sorrows, suffering, hopes, frustrations, you know, all that is related to human life itself. And, and that is the, the, the power of literature it's, it, it's the criticism of life its focus is to dig deep into the you know in the aspects of life so in that way uh, literature um, uh, no is a criticism of life literature is said to be born out of human expression I know when we say in democracy, for the people, of the people, by the people. Similarly, literature is, you know, by man, for man, of man. You know, even if we are talking about Panchatantra, Panchatantra may be the story of some animals in the forest. Animals may be speaking in animal form. Animals may be speaking, but it's all about life. It's all about wonderful experiences. Ultimately, what matters in the end is, you know, uh, talking about human, human um, problems and predicaments. 
comparisons. You see a lot of comparisons in Panchatantra and how it is directly related to uh, human beings, our greeds, our love, you know, hatred, revenge, all impulses of uh, human being. So uh, basically, uh, literature is man-centric in spite of uh, different stories that we have uh, developed. It's the product of man and his uh, varied experiences. You know, literature is the product of man and it, it, it expresses varied experiences, you know, beginning with our fast, you know, if we go back to our Indian culture, we, we talk minimum 5,000 years of literature. We speak about Vedas, Upanishads, Ramayana, Mahabharata, Kalidasa, variety of if we go back to uh, you know Greco-Roman culture, we read about number of philosophers, thinkers, writers, poets, dramatists like Sophocles. You have you now Plato, Aristotle, Cicero, Aristotle. Uh, all all the great men and their thinking is is beautifully you uh, know expressed in literature. Literature is also an expression, all that is beautiful and lovely. Are we missing, in fact, are we missing the very, very fleeting glimpses of beauty? The, you know, are we missing the wonderful world? Again, to quote you, William Wordsworth, of late, we lost everything. We are out of tune. When Wordsworth says, we are out of tune, can the moonlight give us solace? Can the sunshine give us inspiration? Can the sunset provides you the golden beauty? All. So the, what literature has done is to catch all the fleeting glimpses of nature, fleeting glimpses of beauty. When you are talking about Helen of Troy, you are talking about the beauty of Helen. When you are talking about wonderful daffodils, you know, gold, when you, you know, he says that I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats over high whales and hells, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils beside the lake and beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze. When Wordsworth made a statement in the end, you know, when on my coach in pensive mood I lie, they flash upon my inward eye, my heart with pleasure fills, dances with daffodils. You see, the beautiful and lovely things are available in literature. And today, are we, are we following these things? Are we remembering? When I teach this in the room, can we a situation that, you know, this kind of a romantic uh, play sometimes, you know, becomes redundant and useless if you have the most unromantic lot uh, in front of you. I mean to say that. We are all growing more and more prosaic these days. We are all growing more and more, you know, practical oriented. We are all growing more and more mundane, you know, which, which was predicted long, long ago by the poets, rishis and, and santa uh, and dasas and all, all great thinkers of the past. So literature is an expression of all that is beautiful and lovely. If at all you want to enjoy life, there must be some kind of beauty and, and life is in fact beautiful and how to enjoy it. Literature really teaches you this kind of... Uh, Emerson speaks about that. Literature is the record of the best thought and feeling of intelligent men.
sir. Hello, sir. Sir, we sir you are not audible. See. Sir, you are not audible. What is this? What are these five important points? Literature of purely personal experiences. Say, for example, love poems, autobiography, romantic poetry. Uh, you know, literature may be dealing with these, these different Hello, points Hello. here. Hello. Uh, Hello. Literature. Are you getting me? Hello. Are you getting me, madam? Is the connection all right? Hello. Is it working? Yeah, we are listening, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. Literature is presented in different ways. It may be dealing with the personal experiences, you know, when uh, it's a, uh, mo most of the love poems, you can see uh, Shakespeare writing about true love. True love is a marriage of two minds. And Dunn is speaking about love in a different way. And Keats is speaking about love in a different way. Shelley, Wordsworth, Tennyson, either it may be about love, or about you know, your own experiences. Most of the romantic literature, even in Canada also, if you go back to romantic or now they are kind of a thing, whether it is Bendre, Guempo, variety of writers who wrote wonderful- Hello, sir. Hello. Yes. Hello. Uh, yes, Hello, sir. sir. Uh, please start your uh, screen sharing. You are only visible, sir. Your PPT is not there, sir. Oh. Okay, 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 sir, okay, sir. Uh, Hello, sir. can you hear me? Uh -huh, yes, I'm working on it. Hello, sir, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 I'm hearing you. Uh, I'm trying to share my screen. Hello? Yes, sir, yes. Are you getting me? Okay, okay, sir. I, I am, in fact, I'm going to share my screen now. Hello. Ah, yes. Okay, sir. Now it is uh, visible, sir. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about uh, literature of purely personal experience dealing with love poems. All the love poems are dealing with personal experiences, maybe love, successful love or unsuccessful love, whether it's a successful love like Spencer's or unsuccessful love like Sydney. You know, um, you know, or a very ironic kind of representation by John Donne and, and a frustration kind of a thing, La Ballade in Sans Mercy, uh, written by John Keats. So uh, a love poem is uh, very, very popular. Uh, what Shakespeare writes in his Seven Ages of Man, you know, in the third stage of man, man writes rhymes. You know, that's the, the, most of the romantic poetry appeared when the uh, poets are very young and romantic. The, uh, autobiography is also literature of uh, personal experiences. If you read wonderful autobiographies, you know, read, uh, read about Abraham Lincoln, read about Mahatma Gandhi, read about Nehru, read about, you know, wonderful writers. By reading autobiographies, we change the definition of life. We, in fact, uh, learn that our problems are not really problems. 
when Abraham Lincoln could walk 13 miles for his college, you know, we never find one kilometer walking is, is nothing compared to those people. When we talk about in the experiments of truth and how Mahatma Gandhi struggled to be truthful and how he experimented and how he tried to be truthful. Uh, so we, we, it always questions us that uh, what is our life and how truthful we should be and, and how we should follow such things. Autobiographies really uh, present before us wonderful life experiences of successful men in the world. The second aspect is literature dealing with the common questions of life, death and God, some kind of philosophic literature. Here comes our uh, problem of pandemic, problem of our language. You know, there are many, many poems on death when uh, Dunn said that death be not proud. You know, don't be proud. You know, we think that death is conquering us. And many times, uh, you know, there are examples where poets said that you are not going to conquer me. I, you are just a traveler, like what Emily Dickinson says in her famous poem, because I could not stop that. You know, we are just travelers. And when it is time, you gently I, stop at me and we travel into infinity. It means that looking at life from a different perspective. Uh, we are in a situation like this and we think that uh, death is around us. Anytime we may die, anytime we may be, you know, infected, anytime, you know, life is rather, it is what... Uh, people were feeling during the first and second world war. And this is what we call 20th century as an age of anxiety, as an age of uh, you know, frustration. And th that was the way how people were thinking during that time. And now there are many, many philosophic uh, poems on death. Even Shakespeare writes in his famous poem, Fidel, golden girls and chimney sweepers all must come to dust. Golden girls and chimney sweepers all must come to dust. When, when Eliot also says, I will show you death in handful of dust. You know, there, there, there are, of course, uh, this is not something different. You know, death is not something totally different. You know, sometimes even Sharana say, Sharana you Maraname know, Mahanami, celebrating death. You know, when you read about Savitri of Arbindo, it's it's, it's 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 beautiful uh, you know conflict you can see it is not negating death i tell you you know uh, savitri provides uh, the, the dialogue saying savitri and the question of death uh, you know men grow wiser by reading this kind of uh, uh, literature so there are a number of uh, poems novels when you read uh, old man in the sea, you can understand the power of struggle of an old man and how we are constantly in struggle with nature. And, and uh, this is uh, the need of the day. The third important aspect of uh, literature is literature dealing with nature and man's relationship with the wonder of eter eternal world. You know, nature, about man's nature or nature outside. So literature dealing with either man's nature or nature, prakriti. So uh, literature, we have wonderful literature, nature poetry, and the literature that deals with, um, you know, uh, that's what I, I, I was quoting words, but we are out of tune. Nature is the best teacher. You know, he has written in one of his Lucy poems, education of nature, education of nature. Uh, probably it's, it's because uh, man considered nature as his uh, enemy, because man considered nature as uh, one of his competitors. You know? That's why finally, you know, Shelley made a clear statement in uh, Ode to the West Wind, 
O West Wind, you are a destroyer and a preserver. You know, he tried to compete with nature. When he was a young man, he was trying to run and overtake West Wind. But he came to know that man is not in competition with nature. Man should be in harmony with nature. Finally, he says, lift me as a wave, as a leaf. I fall upon the thorns of life. I bleed. This is, this is how Shelley realizes the power of nature. We must know how to learn Raptures, words was tinted too. So, uh, are you getting me? Hello, sir. Sir, are you hearing me? Hello? Sir, sir please share your screen, Hello. sir. Hello? Hello, sir? Hello? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Please unmute. Hello. Uh, are you getting me now? Hmm. Is it clear? No yes, sir, it's clear. Uh, you can also see the screen now. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, there is there is, there are always technical problems. Let us <laughs> uh, these things. I hope our uh, audience will be patient enough uh, because I was referring to <laughs> to a noiseless patient spider of uh, Walt Whitman. You know, you learn a lot of things from uh, a spider. We were reading the poem of Spider and the King, the King who was defeated and hiding in the uh, port and he, he did see the spider and seeing the spider, he gained back his energy and, and fought back. In, in this poem also, he says that how a spider works selflessly, how the spider works, you know, continuously. This is what we see, the persistence, you know, continuity. Uh, even you remember A.H. Clough's poem, Say not the struggle, not availeth. You know, don't say your struggles are useless. Somewhere the rocks, somewhere the waves of the sea are hitting the rocks, but somewhere they are making inroads. Somewhere you think that you lost the battle, but in the darkness you don't know your, your soldiers won the battle. It means literature tells us that we should learn to live in harmony with nature. We should learn to understand, you know, and enjoy the beauty of nature. 
whether it is any animal, Panchatantra is the best method in which we come to know all the human instincts, human impulses are beautifully discussed in the form of stories of Durga Siva's Panchatantra. And in the fourth section, you can see literature dealing with social and world order activities, social novels, satires. If you go back to, uh, you know, Renaissance society is different from post Shakespearean society. Post Shakespearean society is different from Puritan society, where a lot of restrictions, you know, uh, came in. Restoration society is known for licentiousness, known for, you know, this kind of uh, liberty. And we, we also learn in uh, uh, romantic literature how the revolution of uh, uh, Fra France, um, you know, led changes, how Napoleonic wars, how world war, how the depression, how the pandemic today is in fact affecting us. All these kinds of things, socio, uh, social issues, and, and the world order are beautifully explained in uh, literature, whether it is a, um, a restoration drama, which is in fact a social document um, holding the mirror to society. Literature holds mirror to society. That is a wonderful thing. We, society is the raw material of literature. And, and if you read a, a wonderful, uh, writings of Charles Dickens, whether it is Hard Times, Pickwick Papers, Tale of Two Cities, in which he speaks about uh, the, the Paris and London and the bloodshed in French Revolution, and, and many David Copperfield and the mm, wonderful uh, a presentation of society, the whole group of <laughs> Hello. Yes. And the fifth one finally is literature, which deals with literature and arts themselves. This is what we call criticism. Criticism is an interpretation of interpretation. So many people say life is already interpreted and it is interpretation of interpretation. So critics also, yes, even yes, 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 literature yes, yes, is also yes, yes, considered yes, yes, as yes, yes, literature. Okay. So if we look at all these things, let us uh, move to the next discussion here. Pandemic and literature. <laughs> and of course, it is a very interesting thing. Pandemic. Today we are reading pandemic literature. There have been many webinars I, I could see in groups and uh, many people are talking about uh, pandemic literature. Many people are talking about Holocaust literature. You know? mm. And I am not going to, of course, offer you such a big uh, you know, uh, knowledge of uh, pandemic literature here. I try to just uh, attach this pandemic situation in the country and in the world uh, and uh, whether it is a new one, or whether it is a repetition of history, whether it is, uh, you know, a common to all the human lives, we must understand this. Many of us are under the impression that we are only the first generation suffering this kind of a pandemic. No, not at all. You know, the 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 creation of the world since the creation of the world itself there have been instances there have been such examples of great pandemics in the past so throughout the course of human history disease outbreaks have ravaged humanity sometimes changing the course of history and at times signaling the end of entire civilizations. Now, if you go back to the history, if you go back to the history of uh, civilization, sometimes civilizations are now, uh, you know, we could only see the fossils, we could only see the excavations, 
the great civilizations were submerged whether it is indus valley civilization arabian civilization chinese civilization babylonian civilizations so there are number of uh, reasons why civilizations uh, now vanished you know you and we read about uh, jurassic uh, and how how the dinosaurs lost their you know a whole species themselves so what about man then man has come across experienced this kind of uh, situations uh, i just quote you few i am not going to give you the list of pandemics that happened in all even i was just browsing through the net yesterday that i could see 20 great uh, you know pandemics in the world i'm not going to list all those things what interested me is plague of athens in 430 plague was such a great pandemic in those days the death toll as high as 1 lakh people can you imagine that in 430 bc if you look at the population density or population of uh, uh, you know greeks are concerned 1 lakh people dying of plague is really like 1 uh, uh, crore people dying today in many cases pandemics reduced the size of indigenous people when we are talking about indigenous people of uh, australia when we are talking about indigenous people of america when you are talking about indigenous people of many african countries they all perished because of pandemics they all perished for malaria they all perished for uh, plague they all perished for these diseases for which there was no medicine at all we read even in 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 uh, in the place of sophocles uh, you know in edipus in antigone in many many places we come across this kind of uh, uh, references that uh, the city was ravaged by plague the city was ravaged by famine and all that the spanish influenza i, I am not going to talk about the whole history but i just give you the, Sp- the spanish influenza Oh, oh, the great pandemic that happened between 1918 and 1919 which caused 50 million deaths in those days 50 million deaths 5 crore people perished it is not the death equivalent to first world war or second world war i mean to say that pandemics killed people mercilessly whether it is pandemic in 1957 1960 of course and the spanish influenza is the biggest loss of humanity and you know aids also ravaged this in 80s and 90s and more than 35 million people lost their lives and coming to this this covid 19 the worst hit pandemic of our times globally uh, it is yesterday's data yesterday evening data at 33 lakh 7 i know it sir you are not audible again uh can, can you hear me Yes, sir. Uh, share your screen, sir. Uh, yes, 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 sir. Is it time, sir? Uh, how much I am going to? How, how long I am going to speak for another ten minutes? It's okay, sir. You can take. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. 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 Okay.
see. Um, so this is the uh, talking. That's what I was telling you in the you know in the beginning of my talk that our our total consciousness is totally covered by the very uh, you know idea of this pandemic. And we are now talking about this language only, the language of pandemics. We are now speaking the language of pandemics, whether it is children, we are not talking about mass, we are not talking about steel downs, we are not talking about lockdowns, we are now talking about, uh, you know, inpatient, outpatient, uh, you know, quarantine. This, this is now the situation around us, gloom around us death and suffering it is not because we witness even uh, i was just speaking about uh, darwad in the beginning that darwad was very calm and quiet in the beginning in march april may there was no problem at all immediately darwad become a, a, a covid hotspot and we are now experiencing more than 170 80 cases and deaths are happening here and there and what is our mentality when you see deaths around you? And we also imagine ourselves sometimes being affected, sometimes being carried to hospitals, this, that. This is what we call a kind of a gloom around us. You know, false information spreading fast. Um, dear friends, we must also know that pandemic is not so dangerous. As for, uh, you know, the experts, it is not deadly. It's not like cancer. It's not like AIDS. But false information around us made us think. Many committed suicide. Before, before getting this uh, uh, COVID, many committed suicide. This is the mindset that people are developing these days. It means that it's because of uh, false information uh, through different uh, channels, through different uh, media, through different kinds of, uh, you know, um, digital uh, literature. Uh, so there is no clear and straightforward information. That's why people are in anxiety. Less focus on positive news. We, we don't see, actually, uh, hope is the best thing, actually. Uh, we don't see rather discussions, uh, positive discussions. We hardly see uh, that um, there is a, a good discussion on uh, positive developments around us because life sustains in spite of all the you know, conflicts in, in spite of all the dangerous things around us. When you read uh, Chaman Nahal's Azadi, finally, what happens after the partisan life sustain? Life becomes more important when you read G.B. Shah. We come to know that chocolates are more important than bullets. There is a hope. There is a positive message that people get. Uh, we are in psychological depression. Many people suffer psychologically. Even the good educated people. I'm. I'm now talking. I'm not talking about uh, the illiterates. I'm talking about semi literates. I'm talking about knowledge people with half knowledge. Okay. So uh, this is the situation now that uh, we are surrounded by all the negative thoughts. Okay? Minds is developed, and somehow other uh, other problems are created because of lack of clear knowledge, lack of reading. Yeah, I'm coming to this point here. Uh, we were all in lock. We were all in lockdown situation, but we lack reading. We lack the best knowledge. We are now speaking the language of fear and gloom. We are now speaking, you know, that's what I told you in the beginning, that how we are speaking only those aspects of life, which, uh, you know, brings us 
only the negative thinking. How, 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 how do we come out? How to face? Of course, um, as uh, it's very clear, you can't uh, conquer death. You can't, you know, mm, negate it. But life is available to you and you should not negate the life available to you. This should not happen in the present situation. Of course, if you are, uh, you know, how literature helps us overcome this kind of uh, fear. I remember a famous poem of uh, uh, Rabindranath Tagore, where the mind is without fear, the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the clear stream of reason runs into that. No, he, he speaks about uh, where the mind is without fear, uh, the head is held high, where the knowledge is free. So fear is created because of ignorance. Fear is created because of half understanding. Fear is created because we, are, we, we, we do not know the situation properly. We do not have basic understanding of life. We do not have basic understanding of death. We do not have basic understanding of joys and sorrows which are ever changing. Nothing is permanent. Literature makes us think positive. If you read literature, if you remember Anne Frank's You know, uh, what in France? Sorry, sir. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. Are you, are you getting me? Yes, yes, sir. Oh, that uh, is a is continuous close. problem. Someone is calling me again and again. Oh. And uh, maybe, uh, yes. I mean to say that we are surrounded by this kind of a situation around us. And we do not try to see the positive aspect of life. We are not thankful to what God has given to us. Remember Milton's on his blindness, that one talent which is death to hide, lodged with me useless. Half of my time is spent. I do not blame God. I do not blame anybody. God has already given me maximum years and I did not make use of that. Either are we talking about the best times given by God or nor are we talking about the best time available now. You know, one should understand that we are not totally in that kind of a very bad situation. But because of this negative mindset, we begin to think. So if you are a good reader, you begin to think positive. When you read Anne Frank, you understand the value of seconds minutes, you know, and the time expands according to the situation, what Albert Einstein says in his theory of relativity. You know, we don't understand. We think that our problems are the biggest problems in the world. You know, my common, it's a, actually a very silly problem compared to the problems faced by our people are concerned. I mean to say that a person who studies literature will have the best knowledge. Example, we must see the beauty in nature. You know, many are talking about uh, the situation around us and some positive people were talking about 
the the pollution control some people were talking about uh, clear ganga clear you know uh, crystal clear waters and all that there is some hope there life sustains despite of struggles pandemics wars read read about the train to pakistan read about the holocaust literature read about you know all we come to know finally life sustains there life conquered all these uh, you know pandemics it makes us philosophic in thinking literature provides you a minimum philosophy of life i was quoting actually i was quoting you um, you know uh, um, dickens i was quoting you death i was uh, you know i was quoting uh, some of the poems of john dan some of the poems of william shakespeare and the death the leveler you know in that so literature should provide us this kind of understanding when we are living we are living fully we should live life fully enjoy you are you are alive we are alive today is the biggest blessing god has given us many people are not alive many of many people who were born with us are not alive today so in in such a situation we are supposed to uh, you know um, think philosophically shakespeare shelley tagore premchand if if we read these thing, people when you read shakespeare's uh, shakespeare's uh plays whether you are talking about hamlet's delay in taking decision macbeth's over ambition you know king lear's old age insanity or othello's suspicion it makes us wiser we grow wiser tragedies make us wiser actually we we correct ourselves the stories of human tragedy hope is the best medicine taught by literature finally hope hope is everything you know that that's uh, that's only the energy you know we are supposed to gain uh, from our readings our readings you know no no book tells you no book tells you to go and you know uh, prompts you to uh, suicide no books prompts anybody to go finally all books give you a direction whether it is a tragedy comedy biography autobiography you know a poem a prose piece an essay whatever finally you have a message when you read uh, you know a story of k abbas sparrows we come to know that even a hard hearted man why abba you know, karim khan became hard hearted and how he regains love by seeing the sparrows sparrows provide him the best lessons that the, the sparrows try to protect their uh, children Uh, from man's um, you know hitting i i mean to say that by reading a story uh, of uh, such a you know person we we redefine our life so this is the need of the hour today this is the need of the hour uh, what what is uh, uh, you know um, killing us or what is actually troubling us is half knowledge um half understanding uh, what is troubling us is our uh, ability you know our, our we that's what uh, many people say oh, happiness is individual uh, why you are happy means uh, a, a strong man says i want to be happy that's why i am happy i have decided to be happy that's why i am happy this kind of a mindset is to be developed maybe many things things may be falling around but there is always a, there may be a straw to protect you there may be a small thing to protect you 
so what i feel after i just uh, you know this is what i am just telling you sharing some of my experiences or my reading of literature every time uh, i again caught when in my pencil when i lie okay, on my couch in pencil mode they flash upon my inward eye it means that all the great books should come and flash upon us all the great thoughts where it is plato aristotle you know socrates who died for the sake of truth plato aristotle longinus you know all the great writers of the past present local writers or whether it is lavani literature whether it is you know oral uh, literature everything even you are talking about janapada proverbs and all that they provide you the best experiences of life you know uh, finally it makes us think positive and our language changes our, our our language changes we begin to speak positive language we begin to speak and the, the language of beauty we begin to speak the language of love we begin to speak language of sympathy empathy we begin to speak that life is a blessing we begin to talk about this kind of a thing enjoy each and every bit of life every live minute by minute you know that's a very interesting thing living minute by minute uh, i remember some lines of w wades in a, uh no easter 1960 a terrible beauty is born sometimes there there is a need uh, that we must understand the best thoughts best ideas best experiences explained in beautiful words what i feel today is we must try to understand we must try to see the beauty in life we must try to see the beauty in duty we must try to see the most positive so uh, i hope that literature reading of literature whether it is poetry drama novel biography autobiography essays the best articles will certainly take you out of uh, negativity and make you feel stronger healthier and the most beautiful person on the earth as the skin says full bodied happy hearted human beings this is really the wealth of nation what is the need of the hour is our full bodied happy hearted human beings i congratulate bk college of chikodi for having invited me and giving me this kind of an opportunity to share few of my thoughts on this occasion of national level webinar on the topic the role of language and literature in pandemic situation once again i thank you all for your patient listening thank you so much yes hello hello thank you sir thank you so much it was a very indeed informative session sir uh, now the platform is open for discussion some of our participants have posted uh, some queries sir and i would like to bring Please. it to in it uh, into your concern sir first uh, rajesh naik of uh, uh, chikodi has uh, posted that what about the origin of english literature throw some light on it origin of english literature of course um, you know whether it is visible now or not we we talk about the origin of english language when we see english language is divided into three important stages from 7th century to 11th century it is called old english from 11th century to 15th century it is called middle english and from 15th century onwards elizabethan onwards we call it modern english and although the oral literature was available in old english also uh, you know we are now talking about oral literature of Engl england uh, before chaucer 
Before Chaucer, there were stories about Sir Gawain. Uh, before Chaucer, there were uh, stories about the wolf and all that. But uh, what we consider the beginning is uh, Geoffrey Chaucer's uh, contribution to English uh, literature through his famous uh, block to Canterbury Tales, Canterbury Tales. And then you see the whole story, the, the dark age in 15th century and the beginning of Renaissance and Elizabethan age in 16th century. And uh, most of our students begin to study English literature from 16th century onwards. And that's what uh, I can just share. Thank you, sir. Yes, uh, Professor HR Sharad Kumar is asking, what is fear? It is definitely not what you wish to convey. Kindly exfoliate. Uh, fear. Actually, uh, a reporter asked Mahatma Gandhi, what is the problem of Indians in uh, getting independence? And he, he said that they are suffering from fear. And what is the remedy for fear? He said, the remedy for fear is fearlessness. Okay, and the best tablet for the disease of fear is fearlessness. I'm not going to give you the psychological analysis of fear. I, uh, I was talking about uh, fear, fear psychosis. Fear is born in the mind. Fear is not the question of the body. Fear is the product of mind because man has a mind and fear comes to you because as I quoted uh, Rabindranath Tagore, where the mind is without fear, the head is held high, where knowledge is free. You know, I mean to say that where there is knowledge, where there is understanding, where truth prevails, where honesty prevails, fear there is no fear at all. You know, you don't fear anybody, even the death. You don't fear uh, job. You don't fear, uh, you know, anybody. Fear is purely the product of ignorance, in my opinion. And you have to conquer with fearlessness. And this fearless comes to you from the better understanding of literature, readings, experiences, sharing, caring, what we say, impulses of approach, like love, kindness, mercy, empathy, sympathy. So if truth, honesty, if you follow these uh, things, fear naturally you know, vanishes and you will be fearless. That's what I told you, one should be looking always at the best that is given to us. And I quoted that uh, Anne Frank. Okay. Yes. Thank you, sir. Is pandemic situation going to change the mindset of people? Is <laughs> naturally, naturally, because Social order is changing now, and we are now talking about social distancing, physical distancing. We are now talking about uh, masking ourselves. Um, earlier, we were boxing, you know. I remember mending wall, you know. We were actually walling in and walling out. But this pending situa pandemic situation has further divided the society in terms of physical distances. You know, naturally it has affected us. It has been inevitable for all of us to follow these rules. Uh, naturally, there is some kind of a gaps. We all are experiencing, we are not able to meet our parents. We are not able to meet our relatives. We are not able to, you know, conduct classes, you know, physically, the teachers, uh, student relationship the you know father son or parent and children relationship they are all affected invariably there is no doubt about it but there is a need for redefining life redefining ourselves some hundred years ago when there were no flights when there were no when there were no such uh, facilities we we did i remember carlyle writing letter to his uh, brother in Canada talking about all the activities going on, kids writing letter to his brother. 
so in those days life sustains even at the physical uh, the, the you know distancing because there is there is love there is a kind of uh, understanding so in spite of all uh, the physical distancing uh, if we manage our emotions if we manage uh, the impulses of approach life would be beautiful uh, helping caring for each other considering someone sympathetically and it is quite common that's what i told you that the negative mindset should go uh, we should we should learn to live with this covid 19 we should learn to redefine our life in the changed context that's what the need of the hour one should not lose heart there are other opportunities of reaching out to the people reaching out to our students reaching out to our people our relatives our people who are in need uh, in fact your value will be more when you help the people in need so pandemic uh, you know it's not an ordinary thing it is pandemic means the disease which spread across the globe is called pandemic it is not just one country i tell you the biggest countries in the world the the richest countries in the world have suffered highest casualties and they have known that nothing could stop death and we only should respect and try to redefine our life yes i don't know whether i have answered your question <laughs> yes thank you sir sir next question is uh, could you please explain about present reality with literature how does literature play an important role in pandemic days i am not expert in uh, the pre- contemporary literature i have been talking all the time about the literature past and there may be of course what we see in the facebook twitter and then on the social media new literature is coming up and uh, like war poetry holocaust literature there will be of course a literature of the pandemic literature of covid 19 which will be decided by the history but i tell you that um, the poets are responding the playwrights are responding but what i could see is just some wonderful articles written these days uh, but literature is not just a matter of uh, this particular uh, contemporary society even this society is also reflected in the past because there are no great changes that you can see. society is changing uh, Uh, and literature responds to the changing values and try to you know express uh, the social concerns social divisions social the best and the evils this will continue in literature there is no doubt about it but our past books will certainly help you a number of books written in the past will certainly help you overcome the present fear thank you yes. sir uh, question from uh, mr vijay kalmat why literature is significant for each subject to refer why literature is is significant for each subject to refer uh i think you know i was just talking about the power of literature <laughs> power of literature in the sense power of knowledge or literature is known for the, the, the capsuling uh, life's experiences capsuling you know the best experiences are available in the form of capsules to you you know they they make you in conquer fear you conquer the misunderstanding uh, you know many many of our diseases are uh, side somatic many of our diseases are born out of mind you know uh, so obviously 
study of literature, whether you are a student of science, arts or commerce, you know, the study of literature, what our teachers used to say, sharpen our minds, widen our understanding. You know, your, your understanding is widened, the horizons of understanding. And obviously, your mind becomes cooler, calmer, and you become, you know, that's what uh, we used to say, Rishi. You know, the, the poets are also called Rishis in India. It means that you, 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 you become uh, like uh, um, full river. I mean to say that uh, you will not be wavering like the stream. And uh, if you are a man of knowledge, again, to quote you, Bacon, reading maketh a full man. So you will be full. And it is in spite of your, irrespective of your disciplines and all that, study of literature or reading of literature should be made, uh, you know, habit or a way of life and that makes life rather interesting. The best of our uh, scientists are the greatest leaders of literature, quote Abdul Kalamji, quote Einstein, quote, uh, you know, uh, Darwin. They are the best readers of literature and also contributed greatly to literary uh, genres. Thank you, yes. sir. Uh, now I request uh, Mr. Ajit Karigar, our co-organizer, to propose a... Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's been a very helpful, interesting, and engaging webinar. Kindly bear me for a few more minutes, because there is a huge support to team of KLE Society's Basav Prabhu Kore Arts, Science, and Commerce College, Chikodi. I, Ajit Karigar, Department of English, wholeheartedly thank Dr. Gurunath Badigayar, resource person of today's webinar, for accepting our invitation at a very short notice and enlightening us with his vast knowledge and experience. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks. Next. I would like to thank our dynamic and beloved principal, Professor U.R. Rajput, sir, supporting and making this webinar successful. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I propose my sincere thank to Dr. B.G. Uh, Kulkarni, sir, IQSE coordinator, for his valuable inputs and support throughout the webinar. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I thank Dr. Srimati Geetanjali Dodmani, Head Department of English and Convener of today's webinar for constantly encouraging us to do this webinar. Thank you, ma'am. I also thank Sri Prakash Y, Dr. Vinayak uh, Manjlapur, Dr. Bapu Gauda Patil and Sri Shantinath Latte, sir, for your technical support right from the beginning of this webinar. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I thank our today's lively and cheerful host, Ms. Sujata Kadapure. Thank you so much, ma'am. I thank all teaching and non-teaching staff of our college for their knowing and unknowing support throughout this event. Thank you very much. Finally, I thank all the participants for their interest in today's webinar and making this webinar grand success. Thank you all. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody for uh, patient listening. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Your feedback will be, link will be shared in a uh, very short period. Thank you. Everyone. I congratulate uh, BK College, Tikodi, for a su kind of successful conduct of this seminar. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bang Mabule? Can it drive a quick back further? Could we have to go to Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Madam, please feedback. Ah, feedback link and call us, ma'am. Feedback link. Ah, 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 feedback link.
feedback link will be displayed in a chat box please wait for a few minutes okay madam thank you ಮತ್ತೆ ಓಕೆ ಸರ್ ಬಂದಿದೆ ಸರ್ ಬಂದಿದೆ ಹಿಂಗೆ ಬರ್ಬೋದು 